Hi, and welcome to the Focus on Eye Health Expert Series. I'm Jeff Todd, President and CEO at Prevent Blindness. Joining me today for a discussion on uveitis and inflammatory eye disease is Dr. Stephen Yeh, Professor and Stanley Trulson, Jr., Chair of Ophthalmology at the Trulson Eye Institute at the University of Nebraska Medical Center. Thank you, Dr. Yeh, for joining me. Thanks, Jeff. It's great to be with you here today with uh, Prevent Blindness. Um, so, so prevent blindness is declared the third week of September as an inflammatory eye disease week. Can you explain what IEDs, inflammatory eye diseases, are and how they differ from other conditions that we might be more familiar with, like glaucoma or macular degeneration? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Jeff, again, for the opportunity to speak with you and prevent blindness and also everybody who's in the listening audience. Uh, inflammatory eye disease really includes a broad spectrum of disease conditions. Inflammatory eye disease, I specialize in a condition called um, uveitis, which is inflammation of the uvea or a layer uh, within the eye. Uh, and this is different from glaucoma and macular degeneration and the type of symptoms that patients will experience. Uh, with glaucoma, it can be sometimes largely asymptomatic because we know that it affects the peripheral vision uh, first and affects the nerve. It's this uh, structure that connects the eye to the brain. Whereas with macular degeneration, it oftentimes affects your central vision um, in individuals who are older. And with uveitis, it can actually affect uh, multiple aspects of vision. It can lead to um, decreased vision, redness, uh, light sensitivity, and ultimately affect both the central vision and the peripheral vision, depending on the location of where the inflammation is within the eye. Could you talk a little bit more broadly around what inflammatory eye diseases, broadly speaking, are? That's a really great question. Our body has a way of, of developing inflammation in response to uh, certain stimuli, things that, can be, that we can be exposed to, things in the environment. And uveitis, we actually will classify into infectious uveitis. These are inflammatory eye conditions that are due to infections that infect the eye, uh, such as herpes, uh, tuberculosis is another infection uh, of public health impact that can lead to um, inflammatory eye disease or uveitis. But other autoimmune disease conditions, uh, conditions such as systemic lupus um, and also rheumatoid arthritis, who is a condition that many of us may be familiar with, can also lead to inflammatory eye disease, uh, inflammation of the white part of the eye. It's called scleritis as well. And so there really are two broad categories. There's infection and there's non-infection autoimmune conditions. These can ultimately lead to uh, inflammatory eye disease that can affect vision and also quality of life. So what are some symptoms of uveitis? Yeah, so symptoms of uveitis really can vary a bit uh, depending on the age demographic as well as the location of where the inflammation uh, may be. For instance, pa pa patients who have front of the eye inflammation or anterior uveitis uh, can have redness, light sensitivity, sometimes even pain and blurred vision. Other individuals, if they have inflammation involving the gel of the eye, this is called um, intermediate uveitis. Um, again, this is the middle portion of the eye can have floaters, decreased vision. And if patients have inflammation within the back part of the eye or the retina, they can have um, severe changes in, in visual acuity um, that can happen pretty quickly um, sometimes. And it's definitely something that requires uh, the treatment of an eye care uh, professional. So, so what, um, what sorts of treatments are there for uveitis then? Yeah, so coming back to what we talked about before with the infection and non-infectious uh, varieties of uveitis, if, if there's an infectious disease condition um, that's, that's leading to the uveitis, and these require um, antibiotics, uh, antimicrobial therapies that actually take on the pathogen, take on the infection that's causing the uveitis. If this is more of a, what's called an autoimmune disease process, then, then there's really two uh, large categories. Uh, there can be systemic medications, either pills that are administered to uh, treat the inflammation or, or local eye drops, local uh, corticosteroid eye drops. Uh, sometimes there can be injections around the eye that can also help um, with inflammation as well. But all of these uh, treatment uh, paradigms, these treatment options are really uh, a discussion that we like to have with our patients to think about both how this can impact and treat the disease, as well as the different side effects that we want to make sure that we're also very aware of. It, and speaking of patients, are, are there certain groups that are higher at risk for developing uveitis or ages or demographics? 
Yeah, Jeff. So I think that one of the most important things that we think about with this disease condition is that this this while this is not the as common as we as we think of with glaucoma or macular degeneration, UBS does tend to affect individuals um, who are between their their twenties and their 50, 50 years of age. Uh, I think that the term, uh, the the time of in our lives where we're most productive, I think was used before, but I think that that number is going up um, with each year. Uh, but I think it, the 20 to 50 year old uh, patients are more, most commonly affected. There's a slight preponderance of females versus male patients, uh, but patients of all ages can develop eye inflammation. Uh, there's a condition with, with children called juvenile idiopathic arthritis, what used to be known as JRA or juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. Um, that can affect children as well. So really it's any patient, patients of all ages um, can be affected by inflammatory eye diseases. Okay. Um, so when you first diagnose a patient, um, what's what advice do you give that patient around their condition? Yeah, I think that when when a patient is first diagnosed with uveitis, it can be um, certainly disconcerting um, and even scary in some situations. And so, what I, I like to tell patients that it's important to um, to again understand the disease condition, understand uh, what are the targets that we're going to take on and treat, and also I like to express to patients that we have very effective treatments. Uh, that are available once we have a better idea of what's causing their UBI. So I think that there is reason uh, to be hopeful. There's reason to be optimistic that while um, there's this, they're dealing with this inflammatory eye disease, that they're not alone, um, that there's other patients out there that have, have been able to be treated um, and improve their quality of life. And I like to encourage them in this fashion to know that there's a number of treatments that were already being used and also research that's being done uh, with this, within this arena as well. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, on that point, um, you know, I find it fascinating that there's so much innovation in eye care right now. We see so many new treatments for a variety of diseases coming out. Are you aware of any specific research studies in, in the UVI space right now? Yeah, so I think that, Jeff, we're really excited about all the, the treatment uh, innovations that are ongoing within the entire spectrum of diseases within ophthalmology. But within uveitis specifically, I think that the areas that I'm most uh, excited about are really related to the innovations in drug delivery. Um, there's therapies that can more appropriately target um, different areas of the eye. There's one technique called supracroidal drug delivery that allows for very, very specific targeting of the medication around the eye. There's also other new mechanisms, um, new, um, really where we think about why a condition is acting the way that it is um, in terms of the proteins that are in the body that are interacting with the eye. And so we have treatments now that can actually locally target um, these, um, these proteins that aren't behaving the way that we need them to inside the eye. And so having this very precision directed therapy, I think is very important. And we have these therapies both that go, um, that can be treated locally in the eye, as well as being administered um, systemically as well. And I think that there's a lot of promise um, in some of these technologies and therapies that we have for the future. Well, that's terrific. Um, well, as we, as we kind of wind down, do you have any final thoughts you'd like to share with our audience around uveitis and IEDs in general? Yeah, so I think that when we think about um, IEDs um, in general, there is a spectrum of, of disease conditions uh, that we have to understand and try to diagnose before we do treatment. But I think with, for, for the patient just to understand that it's important to get some information to really understand their condition, but there really is a broad spectrum that goes from very, very mild disease to very, very severe disease. And as long as we know where they are on the spectrum, then we'll, for instance, the patients with very mild disease, we can treat with just local eye drops. Um, these can be sometimes, uh, I wouldn't say self-limited, but can end pretty quickly. Whereas patients with, with uh, worse disease, then we'll treat uh, with more assertive um, therapies. But there are treatments available across the spectrum. And so I think for individuals who are just learning about their condition, and starting out, starting out and trying to find out about the condition, there's a reason to have hope that we do have a lot of treatments that are available for um, inflammatory eye diseases. That's wonderful. And, and certainly for anyone watching who would like more information on uveitis or inflammatory eye disease, you can visit preventblindness.org for more information. Um, thank you, Dr. Ye, for your time today and for your service on our scientific committee and what you bring to prevent blindness. Thanks so much again, Jeff.